Audientia presents The Fisherman and His Wife There was once a fisherman who lived with his wife in a pigsty, close by the seaside. The fisherman used to go out all day long fishing, and one day, as he sat on the shore with his rod, looking at the sparkling waves and watching his line, all of a sudden his float was dragged away deep into the water. In drawing it up, he pulled out a great fish. But the fish said, Pray let me live. I am not a real fish, I am an enchanted prince. Put me in the water again and let me go. Oh, ho! Said the man. You need not make so many words about the matter. I will have nothing to do with a fish that can talk. So swim away, sir, as soon as you please. Then he put him back into the water, and the fish darted straight down to the bottom, leaving a long streak of blood behind him on the wave. When the fisherman went home to his wife in the pigsty, he told her how he had caught a great fish, and how it had told him it was an enchanted prince. On hearing it speak, he had let it go again. Did you not ask it for anything? said the wife. We live very wretchedly here, in this nasty dirty pigsty. Go back and tell the fish we want a snug little cottage. The fisherman did not much like the business, but he went to the seashore. When he came back, the water looked all yellow and green. He stood at the water's edge and said, O oh man of the sea, hearken to me, my wife Ilsebil will have her own will and has sent me to beg a boon of thee. Then the fish came swimming to him and said, Well, what is her will? What does your wife want? Ah! said the fisherman. She says that when I had caught you, I ought to have asked you for something before I let you go. She does not like living any longer in the pigsty and wants a snug little cottage. Go home, said the fish. She is in the cottage already. So the man went home and saw his wife standing at the door of a nice, trim little cottage. Come in, come in, said she. Is this not much better than the filthy pigsty we had? And there was a parlor, a bedchamber, and a kitchen. Behind the cottage, there was a little garden planted with all sorts of flowers and fruits. And there was a courtyard behind, full of ducks and chickens. Ah! said the fisherman. How happily we shall live now! We will try to do so, at least! said his wife. Everything went right for a week or two, and then Dame Ilsebil said. Husband! There is not enough room for us in this cottage. The courtyard and the garden are too small. I should like to have a large stone castle to live in. Go to the fish again and tell him to give us a castle. Wife, said the fisherman. I don't like to go to him again, for perhaps he will be angry. We ought to be content with this pretty cottage to live in. Nonsense said the wife. He will do it very willingly, I know. Go along and try. The fisherman went, but his heart was very heavy. When he came to the sea, it looked blue and gloomy, though it was calm. He went close to the edge of the waves and said, O oh man of the sea, hearken to me. My wife Ilsebil will have her own will and has sent me to beg a boon of thee. The fish came swimming to the surface and said, Well, what is her will? What does your wife desire now? The fisherman hesitated for a moment but then replied, She is not satisfied with our lovely cottage. She now wishes for a grand stone castle to live in with spacious rooms and towers. The fish pondered for a moment and then replied, 
Go home, and you will find your wife in the castle. Filled with anticipation, the fisherman hurried back home and found his wife standing before a magnificent stone castle. It was adorned with towers, gleaming windows, and surrounded by a vast courtyard. Look, husband! She exclaimed. Our new home is fit for royalty. Isn't it splendid? The fisherman was astonished and marveled at the sight before him. He couldn't believe how his wife's desires had been fulfilled once again. They moved into the castle and enjoyed a life of luxury and comfort. They had servants to attend to their needs, and the castle was filled with riches and treasures. Ilsebil reveled in her newfound status, hosting grand parties and inviting the nobility to their lavish home. However, as time passed, Ilsebil's desires knew no bounds. She grew restless within the grand castle and craved even greater power and wealth. One day, she said to her husband, This castle is magnificent, but it is still not enough. I want to be queen, to have authority over lands and people. Go to the fish and ask for a kingdom. The fisherman was taken aback by his wife's request. He knew that their greed was insatiable, and he was reluctant to approach the fish once again. But Ilsebil insisted, her eyes gleaming with ambition. Reluctantly, the fisherman made his way to the sea. As he stood at the water's edge, he called out, O oh man of the sea, hearken to me. My wife Ilsebil will have her own will and has sent me to beg a boon of thee. The fish appeared before him, looking more imposing than ever. What does your wife desire now? The fish asked in a deep voice. She wishes to be a queen, to rule over a vast kingdom. The fisherman replied with a heavy heart. The fish stared at him with cold, piercing eyes. Go home, and you will find your wife sitting on a throne as a queen. Dread filled the fisherman's heart as he returned home. When he entered the castle, he found Ilsebil sitting on a magnificent throne, adorned in regal attire. Crowned as the queen, she commanded respect and obedience from her subjects. The fisherman observed the grandeur around him, but it brought him no joy. He realized that their insatiable desires had led them down a treacherous path. Days turned into months, and Ilsebil reveled in her newfound power. But being a queen was not as fulfilling as she had imagined. The weight of responsibility and the constant need to maintain her position weighed heavily upon her. She became consumed by fear and paranoia, suspecting everyone around her of plotting against her. One day, while she was lost in her troubled thoughts, a familiar voice echoed in her mind. It was the voice of the fish, reminding her of the consequences of her greed and the price she had paid for her desires. Realizing the error of her ways, she decided to renounce her crown and return to a simpler life. She called for the fisherman and confessed her regrets. Together, they sought the fish once more, not to ask for more but to express their remorse and seek forgiveness. When the fish appeared, they bowed their heads and admitted their mistakes. The fish, sensing their genuine remorse, spoke gently. Your desires have brought you suffering and discontent. Learn from your mistakes and be content with what you have. Greed and ambition can only lead to ruin. With those words, the fish disappeared into the sea, leaving the fisherman and his wife standing on the shore. They returned to their humble cottage, appreciating the simplicity and peace that had eluded them in their pursuit of wealth and power. From that day forward, the fisherman and Ilsebil lived a humble life, grateful for the lessons they had learned. They shared their story with others, cautioning against the perils of unchecked desires and the importance of finding contentment within one's means.
And so, the tale of the fisherman and his wife serves as a timeless reminder of the dangers of greed and the value of appreciating the blessings that life bestows upon us. As the fisherman and Ilsebil embraced their simple life, they found solace in the beauty of nature and the joy of each other's company. They spent their days tending to their small garden, fishing in the nearby river, and cherishing the moments of tranquility that had eluded them in their pursuit of worldly desires. The fisherman, who had once been consumed by the constant yearning for more, now found contentment in the simple pleasures of life. He no longer felt the need to chase after grand castles or seek higher positions. Instead, he took pleasure in the laughter of his wife, the warmth of the sun on his face, and the gentle lullaby of the waves. Ilsebil, too, underwent a profound transformation. She let go of her ambitions and embraced humility and gratitude. She recognized the importance of inner peace and genuine connections over external symbols of power. Together, they learned to value the true treasures in life, love, companionship, and a humble existence. Their newfound wisdom and humility attracted the admiration of their neighbors, who had witnessed their rise and fall. People would often visit their cottage seeking advice, inspired by their journey of self-discovery. The fishermen and Ilsebil shared their story, cautioning against the pitfalls of greed and the never-ending pursuit of material wealth. Over time, the fisherman and his wife became known for their compassion and generosity. They would offer shelter to the needy, share their meager provisions, and lend an empathetic ear to those burdened with worries. Through their acts of kindness, they discovered that true wealth lies in the ability to make a positive impact on others' lives. As years passed, the fisherman and Ilsebil's story spread far and wide. It became a fable that parents would tell their children, a cautionary tale passed down from generation to generation. It served as a reminder to resist the temptations of excessive desires and to find contentment in the simple joys that life offers. And so, the fisherman and his wife lived out their days, surrounded by love and gratitude, leaving behind a legacy of wisdom and humility. Their tale continues to echo through the ages, reminding us to seek fulfillment not in material possessions, but in the richness of the human spirit and the appreciation of life's true blessings that I end their final years together, the fisherman and Ilsebil's bond grew even stronger. They aged gracefully, cherishing every moment and savoring the beauty of their shared existence. They had no regrets for the life they had chosen, knowing that they had found true happiness and fulfillment in each other and in the simplicity of their lives. One calm evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, the fisherman and Ilsebil sat on the porch of their cottage, holding hands and watching the colors of the sky change. They spoke of their journey, reflecting on the lessons they had learned and the wisdom they had gained. As the last rays of sunlight disappeared, Ilsebil closed her eyes peacefully, surrounded by the love of her devoted husband. The fisherman held her hand tightly, knowing that this was their final moment together. In that moment, he felt a sense of gratitude for the life they had shared, for the love they had cultivated, and for the transformative power of their humble existence. In the days that followed, the fisherman mourned the loss of his beloved Ilsebil. He found solace in the memories they had created, in the legacy they had left behind, and in the knowledge that their love would forever endure. He continued to live in their cottage, surrounded by the beauty of nature and the echoes of their shared laughter. The fisherman spent his remaining years as a wise elder, sharing the lessons he had learned with those who sought his guidance. He became a beacon of wisdom and humility, offering counsel to those who were lost in the pursuit of wealth and power. His words carried the weight of his own experiences, and his gentle presence reminded others of the importance of love, 
compassion, and contentment. When his time on this earth came to an end, the fisherman passed away peacefully, knowing that he had lived a life of purpose and meaning. His spirit joined Ilsebil's, and together they found eternal peace, forever united in the realm beyond. Their story, now etched in the hearts and minds of many, continued to inspire generations to come. The tale of the fisherman and Ilsebil served as a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the power of humility and gratitude. It encouraged people to seek fulfillment in the simple joys of life, to value love and companionship above material wealth, and to embrace the beauty of a life lived with purpose and contentment. And so, their story lives on, a timeless reminder that true wealth is not found in the pursuit of treasures but in the richness of the human spirit and the love we share with one another. We hope you've enjoyed this story. Follow or subscribe to discover our latest audiobooks. We welcome your ideas and suggestions.